subject is um, is quite taboo. It makes people uncomfortable. People don't want to hear about someone who has lost a baby. Mm. And I know now what what is in, essential in in my life. Uh, what we should focus on, uh, what is the most meaningful, family, uh, love, happiness, health. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Grateful Mind. I'm Agnes Lowe, professional corporate trainer and Gallup Strain coach. Today is my first episode of interview session with my best friend, Barbara Provost. She was my ex-colleague when we both worked at L'Occitane Hong Kong office. We knew each other for almost 10 years. I find her very special as she has a beautiful soul. As you will see, today we are in the interview. We will hear from her that she will talk about when life gives you new lemons make lemonade. So Barbara will share her story of facing adversity and her fight to regain hope and find a path to happiness. Barbara is French and she can speak fluent Mandarin. She even learned Kung Fu in Taiwan when she was five years old. She was the French national Kung Fu champion for 10 years. So it's a very interesting background. I'm sure you cannot wait to hear about her story. So let's welcome Barbara. Barbara, take it away, please. 非常感谢, Agnes. 大家好. Bonjour tout le monde. Uh, so thank you very much, Agnes, for the warm welcome. And it's um, truly a pleasure to be with you today. Um, let me start by introducing myself quickly. So uh, I was born in Paris and I grew up in Taiwan. Uh, when I was eight, my uh, family came back to France and my father opened a Kung Fu school where I used to train every day. Um, actually, martial arts really played a major role in shaping my life. Martial arts even allowed me to uh, meet a nine-year-old boy one day who was joining my dad's class and uh, when I was 16 he became my boyfriend and today he's my husband yeah and his name is Adrian and together we moved to Hong Kong in 2010 uh, after university graduation. Wow Barbara sounds like a fairy tale and also really a nice life with love, with travel, amazing experience together. But I know something terrible happened a few years back. Can you share yes, with us? I, yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, actually, 2015 has been a pivotal year in our life. Um, in April, I remember we went for the most amazing trip in New Zealand. Uh, in July, I discovered I was pregnant. Uh, of our first baby and uh, in October not only I turned 30, 30 years old but also we got married in south of France uh, so by far the best year of our lives definitely until December 22nd uh, the day our lives totally collapsed. Um, at six months into my pregnancy my waters broke suddenly and I was rushed to the hospital where uh, I uh, had a, an emergency C-section. When I woke up from the surgery, Adrian was there and he told me that uh, our daughter, Mina, had survived, uh, but that she was in a neonatal intensive care unit. I was so shocked, as you can imagine. I was so shocked. I, I couldn't believe that she was not safely growing uh, in my womb anymore. Uh, and I was in a lot of pain, not only emotionally, but physically as well. Yeah. Oh, wow, gosh, what a terrible situation. So what happened next? Well, uh, long story short, um, Adrian and I had to face 
and take the most difficult decision of uh, our lives. Uh, Mina had severe bleeding in the brain and despite multiple attempts, um, the doctors didn't manage to, uh, to stabilize her condition. So we reached a point where we had to let her go. And because um, I had an emergency C-section and I, I was on full anesthesia, and, and because the neonatal intensive care unit uh, was highly restricted, I, I, ended, I ended up in a situation where I knew that the first time I will saw Mina will also be the last. And this was terrifying, terrifying. Uh, when I finally got to see her and I laid my eyes on her, I immediately felt an endless love. I mean, she was so tiny, but so beautiful, really beautiful. And when the nurse placed Mina into our arms, uh, I, Adrian and I really wanted to, to do everything we could with her in this short period of time. So we sang so songs to her, we talked to her, we kissed her while she was living, uh, slowly living this world. Yeah. As you can imagine, Agnes, it's, uh, it, it was extremely difficult, but at the same time, it was kind of um, beautiful and, and magical because this would be the only time we would have with Mina, our, the only family time we would have with her. Wow, Barbara, I can't imagine what you both have gone through. Do you mind you share with us how you dealt with your, your feeling like the sadness and also you must be also angry. How can you deal with it? Yeah, the, the following weeks and months have been extremely difficult. I mean, we were supposed to come back home with a baby and instead we came back with guilt, anger, sadness, you name it. Uh, the doctors uh, didn't find any specific reason why uh, to, like, to explain the premature uh, birth of uh, our baby. So I couldn't help but blame myself for not being able to protect her and bring her safely into the world. So yeah, that, 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 was, uh, that was really hard. And uh, we, we also had to organize our daughter's funerals. We, want, we organized them in Hong Kong, but we wanted to keep them private. So only Adrian and I attended the funerals. Something I remember clearly was uh, the coffin. I mean, I've never seen a small coffin before. And when I saw my, my, my little daughter inside her coffin, I felt that life was so unfair. Um, she was too tiny, too, too young and too innocent to die. And I kept asking myself, why us? Why her? What have we done to do that? And how can we deal with the loss of our daughter? Wow, I, well, it's, it's, it's very hard, Barbara, I'm sure. I mean, I can, I can, I can feel now how, how difficult it has been. So can you share with us how about your emotional state? And there must be a lot of grief. I mean, the grieving time, how do you deal with, with the grief? I think at that point, uh, when I came back home, I felt that uh, I might become crazy, really. And I think the only thing that made me not lose my sanity was Adrian. We had to be strong for each other. When one of us was feeling extremely low, sad, angry, the other one would be there to comfort and listen. And actually, we both uh, we both saw a psychiatrist together, and it helped a lot. It helped a lot. The fact that we were seeing him together helped us understand. Uh, our own emotions and needs, but also our partner's reactions. Because path is, uh, grief, sorry, grief is very personal. 
uh, there is no one good way, a, a good way or a bad way to grief. And there is no standard timeline. It's a long and bumpy road. Yeah, yeah. I, I, can, I can see and hear from you that this experience is deep and you have gone through a lot of the grief. So did you get any support from family and friends? Because I know you have your major family still in France. Oh. Yeah. You have a lot of friends in Hong Kong since uh, even like the colleagues, um, we were together with you in Hong Kong. So did you get any support at that time, especially like family and your very close friends? Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, my mother and my sister came to visit me shortly after I came back from the hospital. And yeah, it helped a lot. Uh, and I'm really thankful to my family <clears throat> for being able to to listen to my pain, my anger, my endless questions, uh, and for not minimizing what we have been through, which is something that people do a lot trying to help. And um, even if, uh, you're right, Agnes, even if my family was, was uh, far from me, um, I had a lot of support in Hong Kong. Um, I had very close friends uh, among my uh, work colleagues, and I remember them visiting me shortly after I came back from the hospital. And the simple fact that they were there with me, crying with me, listening to me, really meant a lot, and it helped a lot, really. And uh, I remember you, Agnes, uh, as well. Um, as you said, we used to be uh, colleagues and we are very good friends. And I, I wanted to take this opportunity to thank you for being there for me when I needed it the most. I'm so touched. Thank you so much. You know, you know, both of us always have a lot of gratitude for our friendship and yeah, yes. we grow from this experience as well. Thank you so yes, much, exactly. Barbara. Yeah, for sharing this part. So what about work then? Did you go back to work or how do you face? Because this is this is very difficult time, but um, I don't know. I don't remember or I was not very clear about how the work situation. So uh, what about work? Yeah, uh, actually less than two months after I lost Mina, I decided to go back to work. Uh, I needed to get my head busy and stop spending days crying at home. This was a need I could feel. I had to get out of home and get busy. Um, I, I remember my first day clearly. Uh, it, it has been very difficult. Actually, I, I was afraid to be stigmatized as the woman who has lost her baby. And I knew I would have to uh, face the whole office. And, uh, and actually the most difficult part was that in order to protect me, some colleagues pretended that nothing happened. They welcomed me and talked to me, but never talked about Mina. And to me, this was very painful because even if my daughter's life has been extremely short, it was real and I needed to talk about her. But I was lucky enough to be uh, in, in, a, in a team with uh, amazing colleagues that were friends at the time and, and, uh, and uh, an amazing supportive boss who gave me an environment uh, where I felt secure and uh, where I could uh, slowly uh, uh, gain confidence uh, in my ability to work again. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I do agree. Yeah, um, we had very good colleagues. And also, I mean, even though we are separate different teams and your boss is also very, very nice. Um, I know her very well too. So it's really, really true. You keep yourself busy, you want to go back to work. And I, I'm sure you have a lot of uh, wondering what will the reaction of the colleagues. I still remember we were like talking about you, how when you come back, when you came back to the office, people may ask you, how's the baby? If someone who doesn't know, if they know they will avoid to talk to you. Uh, I can imagine that you have different kind of anxiety or worry in your head as well. So. Anyway, you came back to work. Besides work, have you done any kind of changes in your personal life 
to cope with this terrible experience? Yes, yes, I did. And actually around six months after the, the death of uh, our daughter, uh, I was going back to what would seem like a normal life, mm, which basically was being able to control my emotions in public. But I needed, uh, I, I needed something more. I could feel that I needed something more. And that was to forgive my body. For a very long time, I felt that my body was responsible for the premature birth of uh, my daughter. So Adrian actually recommended me to join Thai boxing. He knew that for a while, uh, a few years back, I wanted to, to try Thai boxing, but I didn't dare to. And this time I said, why not? I'm not afraid of anything uh, anymore. Uh, what can you be afraid of when you have lost a baby? So I joined Thai boxing class and uh, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed kicking, punching, uh, but mostly I enjoy reconnecting with my body. And uh, I, I know that sports really played a major role in helping me finding a new balance, a new physical and emotional balance in my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that, that, that that is also a good idea to get some something new like exercise as well. So this is for yourself. I can imagine that dealing with this experience is also a couple's business. It's not only your business, right? Don't obviously. Um, I'm sure it's not healthy to blame yourself and you take care of yourself. But how about Adrian? I mean, oh. in terms of your marriage, the relationship, did you do anything specific with Adrian to try to get better, to face this grief and also the situation? Yes, uh, yeah, because you know, Agnes, um, losing a child puts your marriage under a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure. It's very hard to talk about the loss you have experienced when your partner minimizes his or her pain in order to look brave, uh, or um, thinking that uh, hiding the pain will actually make it disappear. But I was really lucky uh, that our bond with Adrian actually got stronger. But we definitely lost our childhood spirit and joy of life. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, uh, and actually, um, at, at that moment, we we had uh, we were going to reach the one year anniversary of uh, our daughter's uh, death, and I remember I, I told Adrian I I cannot be in Hong Kong on that day. I I have to be somewhere else, anywhere else. But I, we have to do something about that. And I remember uh, he he booked a last minute trip to Australia, and we actually arrived. We reached Australia on the anniversary day. And I spent the whole day crying in uh, the hotel room in Sydney. It has been uh, really tough, uh, this one year uh, commemoration. But after that, we had an amazing uh, three weeks trip in Australia. We shared so many amazing experiences uh, and lots of laughs. And that was the most important. We laughed a lot. And this uh, trip definitely uh, gave us hope again. It was a rebound that gave us hope again. Yeah. Wow, it's so good. I'm so glad to hear you have uh, gone for this trip. So did you manage to keep the momentum after this Australia trip? I mean, going for a trip, you really regain the light from the darkness. So did you keep and uh, the momentum afterward when you come back to Hong Kong? Yes, yes, we did because um, uh, funny enough, but uh, a few days after I came back, we came back to Hong Kong. Uh, I discovered that I was uh, pregnant again. So I was really excited, but I only told Adrian after the first scan because I wanted to make sure that everything was fine before sharing the good news. Um, of course, we were both over the moon and, and really happy, but we were also very cautious 
we were afraid something wrong would happen again. So each week was a victory and I had to bed rest for a while. But eventually, uh, our rainbow baby, our son, Armand, uh, he was born on a typhoon day. Um, he was strong, he was loud, he was healthy, and he made us so happy. And I remember the few, first few days, I couldn't take my eyes off him. I felt so lucky to have a healthy and living baby in my arms. Wow, congratulations, Barbara. This must be a very, very beautiful moment. So how was how was it to welcome this new child? Almond, right? Oh, yeah. In your yes. family after you have uh, what you have gone through. It, it has been uh, amazing. I mean, it gave us so much strength, uh, so much love. Uh, we were so happy to uh, finally, finally have uh, our, our family together. And uh, shortly after he was born, we decided to uh, relocate to Europe to get closer to our families. Mm -hmm. And uh, two and a half years later, we welcomed another baby boy uh, called Amori. He's the sweetest and funniest baby on earth. And I really enjoy uh, spending time with my two boys. Uh, they make me uh, laugh, they make me feel love. And of course, they drive me crazy from time to time. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it's, uh, it, it, uh, I know how lucky I am. But there is one thing I really want to share about Armand and Amaury, is that I want them to be able to talk about Mina if they want to. Mina was our first child and she made us parents. She's part of our family history. So we want her memory to be openly and uh, freely shared in our family and among our friends. We don't want, uh, we don't want it to become a, a taboo or burden. Wow, this is a very different perspective in seeing you, you're lost of uh, the first child because sometimes not only asian but i'm sure some people may not choose to to talk about it um yeah. wow this is this is very very special to hear your advice thank you barbara so do you think that mina has impacted you as a mother yeah. of now two very cute and um lovely boys and also as a parent what did Mina, this experience has impacted you. Yeah, Mina's life has been extremely short, but it had a huge impact on my life. So as you said, first as a mother, uh, I know I'm a much better mother because of Mina. Um, she gave me the ability to see happiness in many, many little things in life. And, and I know now what what is essential in, in my life, uh, what we should focus on, uh, what is the most meaningful, family, uh, love, happiness, health. And um, I, I simply want, I, I, because I know life is fragile, I guess, I, I know it. And I, I just want to enjoy everything I can with the one I love most. So this is, uh, as a mother and as a person, uh, I, I feel the need to do something meaningful to me. So recently, uh, I, I joined an organization called SPAMA, which mainly aims at supporting parents after the loss of their baby. Uh, we organize uh, support groups, individual supports, but also uh, awareness campaigns uh, towards the institutions and the public in general to give more recognition and more support to parents facing uh, the death of their, ba their baby. Because too many parents today deal with their grief alone. Because frankly speaking, Agnes, this subject is, um, is quite taboo. It makes people uncomfortable. People don't want to hear about someone who has lost a baby. It's hard, you know, it's, it's painful even to hear that. So uh, 
we want people to speak more about what they've been through, reach for help, and also, yeah, simply talk about it. Because you know, Agnes, uh, talking about our loss is a major step towards recovery. Definitely, I I understand. Yeah, I understand about your feeling about the um, the talking and the sharing. This is a healing part and also the recovery part. I'm so glad now you are an active volunteer at SPAMA. It's really meaningful to to help in this groups because with your experience. So, what you, would you tell someone? What would you tell someone who has just lost a baby? Oh, that's that's a very uh, tough question, uh, Agnes, because there is it, it really depends on the the on everyone's history and uh, background. But uh, usually, uh, I generally share a few principles in my uh, support groups. First, uh, the, the first point is the most important: is that you have gone through something terrible don't feel you did something wrong. Don't think that you did something wrong. That's very important. Um, surround yourself with people that will listen to you genuinely and without judgment. Look for help. Look for help if you need to. There's plenty of help available. Can be family, friends, Maybe you won't find any help among these two, but you can find help among doctors, like psychiatrists, uh, among uh, organizations like, like SPAMA, uh, so organizations that support parents after the loss of their baby. So look for help. And don't make it a taboo in your family, in your couple, among your friends. This is my last advice. Talk about it, talk about it and share your story because it can help others and even inspire them. So, of course, there is no uh, one fits all solution. You have to do what you feel will be helpful in your path towards recovery. So you want to spend days crying at home, watching TV, fine, do it. You want to get busy, go back to work, fine, do it. You want to start painting or playing music or doing sports or traveling, do it. And if you don't want to do anything in particular, do it as well. Yeah, just listen to what you, what, listen to your emotions and your true needs. Yeah. Wow, thank you so much. I'm sure this will be a great advice um, to those parents. Um, this is really, really amazing experience uh, by your sharing. It's very uplifting as well. So Barbara, my last question is, you know, my channel is about gra uh, gratefulness, about the power of gratitude. So who do you feel grateful for? We would like to hear who do you feel grateful for? Um, I feel grateful to a lot of people. Uh, I will start with uh, Adrian, my husband, for being loving, caring, and supportive during good times and bad times. That, yeah, it's very, uh, I, I'm really lucky to have such a, a partner. Um, I feel thankful to my friends and my family for their support along the way and for continuing mentioning me now from time to time. It means a lot. I feel grateful to my body because it gave me two amazing boys. And um, I feel grateful to Mina for making me uh, uh, a stronger and a better person. Mm, great. Thank you so much, Barbara. It really yes. registered how how your love to someone who has already gone to heaven, your little angel, Mina, and also as a great blessing to have two newborn. And uh, it's the first time I hear about Rainbow Baby, and I'm sure there are some takeaway. We learned something from you. So I'm sure you are very happy in France right now with uh, close yes. to your 
family and also with Adrian and also the two boys. I hope next time maybe I can interview the two boys as well. <laughs> yes, so, I yeah, yeah. So I would like to give you a gift. So I have prepared a gift for my guests, and I always love to collect notebook journal for people to write their story. So thank you very much, everyone, for watching this video. And I'm sure we have some takeaway from Barbara and also from her experience, no matter what grief you are facing or you have been facing, you know, there is always some light at the end of the tunnel. So the silver lining is always there. I'll see you next time. And I'm going to have another special guest for my episode two, two weeks later. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you for inviting me, Agnes. Bye. Bye-bye, Barbara.